Hi guys, welcome back to Learn with Mednuggets. In today's video, we will explain to you what case control, prospective cohort and retrospective cohort studies are and how to differentiate them with examples. So let's start with case control and cohort studies. The most important thing you need to remember when it comes to these two study types is that in case control studies, you're dealing with cases and controls. So what are cases and controls? Cases are the people who have the disease, while controls are the people who do not have the disease. And the main goal of this study is to find out if these patients were exposed to the risk factor or not. In other words, you know the disease, but you don't know the risk factor. So you're going back in time to find out if the patients with the disease were exposed to the risk factor or not. For example, Let's say group A has lung cancer and group B does not have lung cancer. Now you want to find out if these people smoked or not. You're checking the odds of exposure to risk factor in people with the disease and comparing that to the odds of exposure to risk factor in people without the disease. And that will give you the odds ratio. So odds ratio is the odds of exposure to risk factor in people with the disease divided by the odds of exposure to risk factor in people without the disease. So for instance, when you go back in time, you will be able to find out that the people with the disease, with lung cancer in this case, smoked, that they were exposed to the risk factor, while the people without the disease, without lung cancer in this case, they did not smoke. They were not exposed to the risk factor we are studying. So with this data, we can conclude with fancy biostat vocabulary that people with lung cancer had higher odds of a smoking history than those without lung cancer. Got it? Right, so now let's move on to cohort studies. In cohort studies, you're dealing with the risk factor, not the disease, not the cases and controls. You're dealing with a set of people who have the risk factor and a set of people who don't. So for example, let's say in group A you have a set of people who smoke and in group B you have a group of people who don't smoke. And now you go forward or backward in time to check if they will develop the disease or they had developed the disease. If you didn't understand what I said until now, just remember that for now, in a cohort study, you're having a group of people with the risk factor and without the risk factor. And we don't know about the status of disease in these two groups of people. We only know about the risk factor at the moment. Okay, so, so now let's see what a prospective cohort study is. In this type of a study, you follow the patients into the future. Means you follow the patients with and without the risk factor into the future to check if they will develop the disease or not. For example, let's say that people in group A are smokers and people in group B are non-smokers. Now you follow these groups into the future to check if they'll develop lung cancer or not. So prospective means following into the future. Now let's look at what a retrospective cohort study is. So retrospective means going back in time. Prospective is the future. Retrospective means the past. So in this type of study, you go into the past, you go into the past, check medical records of patients and find a group of people with the risk factor and without the risk factor. So for example, you analyze the past medical records and find a group of people who smoke and who don't smoke. Now you contact them or call them up for an interview to ask them if they are having the disease which in this case, if they are having lung cancer or not. So whether it's retrospective or prospective cohort, you know the risk factor. You have a group of people who have been exposed to the risk factor and a group of people who haven't. And your goal is to find out if they will develop the disease or have developed the disease of interest. So if we go back to our example, we can conclude with fancy biostat vocabulary that people who smoke had a higher risk of developing lung cancer than people who do not. 
So here we are looking at the relative risk. Relative risk is the risk of disease in people with risk factor who have been exposed to the risk factor divided by the risk of disease in people who have not been exposed to the risk factor. So to sum up, in a case control study, you are dealing with people with the disease and without the disease. And in a case control study, you assess the odds ratio. You can remember this by swapping the letter O and R in the word control. So instead of saying case control, you can say case control. So OR stands for odds ratio. In a cohort study, you are dealing with people who have been exposed to the risk factor or who have not. In this type of study, you assess the relative risk. You can remember it by writing the word cohort with double R, relative risk. The next high yield point you must remember is that cohort studies are good for studying common diseases, while case control studies are good for studying rare diseases. And why is that? It's because if it's a rare disease and we do a cohort study for it, there's a good chance that the people we are studying might not develop the disease because it's rare in the population, right? So it will be a waste of our time and resources. So it's good to perform a case control study in this case. That way we'll have the people with the rare disease with us and that way we can follow up these people and see if they were exposed to the risk factor or not. So that brings us to the end of this video. You might have to watch this video a few times to really understand it. So come back to it and listen to it again. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.